Like in Minecraft digital game, you explore the overworld, build structures, and fight monsters. Does the board game capture the digital game? Do you want to learn how to play Minecraft builders and biomes? In this video, we're going to take you through the full rules for this game, and if you stay tuned till the end, you can pick up some tips and strategies along the way. Coming up. Hi, it's Tarrant. And Stella from Yipo University. Now, let's get to the rules of Minecraft Builders and Biomes, a game by Ulrich Blum, published by Ravensburger. This is the overworld of Minecraft. As in the video game for Minecraft, you will be exploring this overworld, collecting weapons and building resources, fighting mobs, and building buildings on your personal player board. In three scoring rounds occurring during the game, players will score points based on the clusters of buildings they've placed. First scoring for their biome type, then later the building material, and finally the building type. Players can score further points for the mobs they fight off during the game. The game ends after three scoring rounds, and whoever has the highest score wins. To set up the game, give each player a player board. Each board has the same nine squares, but in a slightly different layout. Give each player a matching coloured standee, scoring marker, which is placed on the zero space, and five weapon tiles. Weapon tiles are shuffled into a face down stack. Set up a 4x4x4 cube of building materials by building this support structure and filling it up with building blocks. Finish by removing the support structure. Then set up the main play area. Shuffle the 64 large building and mob tiles and then split them into 16 piles of 4, laying them out in a 4x4 square like so. There should be room between each of these stacks for the standees to be placed. Then shuffle up the 16 white coloured weapon tiles and lay those on the edge of the grid like so. Place all of the character standees in the centre of the grid, choose a first player and you're ready to play. On your turn, you will take two actions, one after the other. There are five different actions that are available for you to take, and you must take two different actions on your turn. You may not repeat the same action twice. Once you've completed your two actions, play passes to the next player clockwise, who does likewise, and so on around the table until the game is over. So now let's look at the five different actions you can take. Your first option is to take two blocks from this large cube. In order to take a block, its top surface and at least two other faces must be visible. So for example, these two cubes, or any of these ones, would all be valid, as would these two at lower levels down the cube. However, neither this one nor any of these have enough surfaces visible for you to take them. Blocks are taken one at a time, so the first block you take may make a second block eligible. The cube is set up on this base, allowing you to rotate and look at the blocks that are available. There are four basic building resources in the game, sand, wood, stone and obsidian, as well as emerald which is wild and can substitute for any of the other four. Your second option is to explore, and this is a two-step process. First, you'll move your standee between zero and two spaces around the board. This must be along straight paths between tiles and can take you out to this road along the edge. You can also choose not to move. Then, as the second step of exploring, you will flip face up the top tile on any pile which is adjacent to your current location. This can reveal buildings, mobs, and weapons. If there are any face-up tiles already adjacent to you when you take the explore action, leave them be and just flip over all of the other adjacent tiles. This action is the only way to flip face-down tiles to the face-up side. And so taking this action without moving may still allow you to flip some tiles to the face-up side and keep progressing with the game. Tiles must be face-up 
before you can interact with them in any of the three other options for your actions. Your third option is to collect a weapon. Pick up a face-up weapon tile that is adjacent to your current location. Then add it to your weapons pile. The fourth option is to fight a mob. To do this, choose a mob tile which is face up and adjacent to your current location. The number of hearts showing on the bottom corner of that mob is the number of hearts you'll need to draw from your weapons pile to defeat it. Let's suppose that we're fighting this one. Take all of your weapons tiles, including your starting ones and any you've picked up off the board. Shuffle them up and then draw three at random. If the number of hearts that you've drawn equals or exceeds that of the mob you are fighting, then you defeat the mob. Take the mob tile into your collection. If you do not defeat the mob, then your action is over. There is no additional penalty beyond having spent that action for no gain. There is a variety of different icons that you'll find on the top corners of the mob cards that you face. If you see a number of points next to a lightning bolt, then you immediately gain that many points upon defeating the mob. If you see the meat icon, then at any point on your turn later in the game, you may discard that mob tile in order to take an additional action. This includes on the same turn that you defeated that mob. When you take this bonus action, you may choose from any of the five actions available in the game, even one you've already taken on that turn. And you may take multiple such bonus actions on a turn if you've defeated enough matching mobs to do so. And when a mob has the hourglass points icon showing on it, then it will give you a certain number of points at the end of the game for each building of a certain type that you've constructed. There are also four special weapons in the game which will have a different effect when you draw them in battle. When you draw a bow and arrow, you may immediately draw another weapon into the same battle. You may do this multiple times if you draw multiple bows and arrows. All hearts drawn from those extra tiles count towards the battle. When you draw the pickaxe in battle, you may immediately take one block from the cube according to the normal rules. If you draw the golden hoe in battle, immediately score two points. And if you draw the TNT, then you have a choice. You may either detonate it, scoring five hearts which is enough to kill any mob in the game, but removing the TNT card from the game as well. Or you may choose not to detonate it, relying on any other hearts that you drew in that draw. In this case, you'll shuffle the TNT back into your deck for a future fight. The final option is to construct a building. To do this, choose a face-up building tile, which is adjacent to your current location, and then spend blocks from your supply, matching the icons shown in the bottom right corner. Buildings will cost between 1 and 5 blocks. Remember that you may always substitute green emerald for any other colour of block. Then take the building tile and place it onto any one of the 9 spaces on your player board. This can include a space which does not match in colour or even covering over a building that you've previously built. If there is an icon in the top right corner of the building showing a lightning bolt and a number of points, then immediately score those points. There will be three scoring rounds during a game of Minecraft, and each is triggered by one layer of this cube of blocks being depleted. When a player takes the final block from the top layer of the cube, the player finishes that turn, including all basic actions and any bonus actions gained by playing mob cards. All players will then perform the first round of scoring. When all cubes are gone from the second layer of the cube, the player will complete that turn, and then all players will do the second round of scoring. And when the final cube is taken from the third level, that player finishes the current turn, and then you'll do the third round of scoring and end game scoring. Each of the three scoring phases works in a similar way, but in each one you'll be scoring a different feature of what you've built. In the first scoring phase, you'll be scoring your biomes, which is represented by the colour of the square or the icon in the top left corner. Find your single highest scoring cluster of matching biomes based on these scores. And this includes the pre-printed biomes without buildings on them. So here, the player has a cluster of three forests, which is worth three points each for nine. And here, there is a cluster of two snowlands, 
which is worth 6 points each for a total of 12. That means the Snowlands is the single highest scoring cluster, and so the player gains the 12 points. In the second scoring phase, you will score for your highest scoring cluster of matching building materials. This is represented by the colour of the building itself, or the second icon on the building tile. So here, the player has three adjacent wood structures, multiplied by three for nine points, two adjacent sand structures, worth four points each for a total of eight, or two individual obsidian structures, each of which is worth six points. The highest scoring of those clusters is the wood buildings, worth nine. The third phase of scoring works in the same way, but now you're looking at the type of building, which is represented either by what the building looks like, or by the third icon. Here, there is a 12-point cluster of two bridges, and a 15-point cluster of three animal houses. And so the player would score 15. Finally, after the third scoring phase is complete, each player will score points based on any endgame objective mobs that they've defeated during the game. Here, the player would get two points for the sand biome that remains, and two points each for the three sand buildings that were constructed. These count if they're anywhere on your board, they do not need to be adjacent in a cluster. The player with the highest score wins. In the event of a tie, whoever has the most blocks left over is the winner, and if still tied, victory is shared. And that's how to play Minecraft Builders and Biomes. We hope that you enjoyed this video and we hope you enjoy playing. If you enjoyed this video, please help us by hitting the like button, subscribe to us, you can also hit the meeple in the corner to do so, and hit the bell icon so you won't miss anything from us. You can also follow me on Instagram for Board Games Journey. And finally, if you have any questions, comments or feedback, please write them in the comment section below. Until next time!